guys so i know a lot of people have been waiting for the next installment on the node empire guide unfortunately it's not going to be something i'm continuing with now the main reason for this is that the economy in xbox is really fluctuating there are so many things being sold and so little being processed that it's very hard to make a stable profit in fact if you're trying to make a profit through live skilling on the marketplace it really is an opportunist market what this means is that you're going to have to pay attention to what's currently selling on the market, what the cost of materials are, and what you're already gathering to be able to actually make a consistent profit. Simply setting your sights on one thing isn't going to help. You could produce 10,000 of one particular blood, for example, and whereas the first thousand might sell, you could then be sat on 9,000 for months at a time. The reason for this being is that a lot of people aren't life skilling. They're simply not investing time into the game in that sense. Grinding gives a much better return on investment for your active playtime. And with the current event on for fishing, pretty much everybody has broke out those rods and is spending their AFK time on fishing. What this does mean as well is that people's warehouses are steadily stocking up with materials. And because of this, the base price on the tier 1 materials has took a nosedive. There is pretty much no money to be made on the tier 1 materials. However, if you look into processing these materials up, yes, there is profit to be made, providing that they sell. However, the sell time can vary dramatically, especially on the EU servers, which is where I'm basing all of this off. It can be really hard to nail a consistent profit. So instead, what I'm going to do today is show you two different tools. Now, these two tools are going to help you select your nodes, find out which nodes to connect, and then also help you with determining the profit and loss of any crafting that you're doing. So first of all, I want to show you this site. Now I'll put the link to both of these sites in the description. Now this is called somethinglovely.net forward slash video. This is a fantastic map and I've been using this for a long, long time. It's got various different options that you can select on the side. However, the main thing with this is it's going to show you every single node in the game. So for instance, we'll go and we'll have a look at the Velia nodes that we've already picked up previously. If you just hover over any one of these nodes, it's going to tell you the CP that you need, and it's going to tell you exactly what you can get from there. So from Batali Farm, you've got two CP for the initial investment, one CP for farming potato, and one CP for farming chicken and egg. And if we come down here to Ancient Stone Chamber, which is another one we picked up in my last video, what you can see there is one CP, you've got your mine, and the materials that you're going to get from there. Now this map's updated to cover absolutely everything. It will cover the sea regions if you want to link up all of your dry fishing nodes. It's going to also provide Valencia nodes and again it's also going to provide Camus Sylvia. So you really don't need to look for where to go. Now the reason I'm showing you this tool is because there is no real one-size-fits-all node. Yes my guide was giving you a vague idea of how to collect the materials for cooking and the materials for alchemy and that is still relevant, what you're going to find is that you're probably sat on a lot of those materials still. Even if you started processing them and crafting, you're still going to be stuck with a whole lot of random materials sat in your bank. What I'd advise doing is pay attention to the market and start investing in the simple things. So for alchemy, for example, you're going to want to pick up all of the trace nodes. You're going to want to make sure that you get the main traces, things like savagery and ascension, and then if you don't want to go out and gather sap yourself, you're going to want to pick up the tree nodes so that you can passively have an income from sap. These nodes are going to set you up for alchemy. That's all they're going to set you up for though. So if you're not looking to do alchemy and you're looking to do cooking, for example, your nodes will slightly change. With Valencia coming in as well, if you're looking to go into trading and looking to do long distance trading, again, that's going to completely change. So if you're doing wood crates or if you're doing ore crates, the nodes that you're going to pick up are going to differ there. What I will try and do in the future, once the economy settled down and the game has settled down properly, I'm going to have a look at various different setups for different life skills. That being said as well, if I was to tell you all exactly what I'm doing and where I'm making my money now, that would crash any markets that I currently have invested in. So for that reason alone, the long-term Worker Node Empire video series just wasn't going to be a success. The more people that got on board, the more the materials depreciated and the less profit there was to be had. But now we've got the nodes out of the way. Using this map is going to help you to set up your node empire and connect the various nodes. It's going to give you an idea of how much CP you need 
and where you need to put them in order to get the various materials. So this tool goes hand in hand with the next tool I'm going to show you. Now the next tool is BDO DAE. The beauty of this website is that it takes away the need for any other spreadsheets. This website is used for profit and loss calculations. It's completely customizable and it's going to allow you to look through the market, look at what materials you have and what you can make from it and determine how much money you can make. The one thing it doesn't factor in though is the time taken to sell. But to give you an example of just how good this website is, I'm going to show you some alchemy cal calculations. So if we go into alchemy and let's, for example, have a look at Tyrant's Blood. So Tyrant's Blood requires traces of savagery, tier two monster bloods, which if you hover over, it'll tell you exactly what they are. So bear, troll, ogre, yak, and it needs monk's branch and pure power reagent. So this is really great. It also drops down and tells you how you get the pure powder reagent if you want to process that from level one up, which in terms of making profit, I would highly suggest doing. If you want to start making Tyrant's Blood and selling this, you know that you're going to need to get Monk's Branch, Trace of Savagery, Monster Bloods, which you're pretty much going to get yourself or buy off the marketplace. And then to get the pure powder reagents, you're going to want to bottle your own water and make sure that you've got grass or weeds and that you've got silver azalea nodes and sugar from the bartenders in any inn. So a little bit more information there. It will give you a breakdown of everything you need to craft this. From there, we're going to work out, for example, we have enough materials to craft 1000 of these. You can alter these for your averages if you want to. However, leaving them at standard is pretty much the way forward. Make sure that you are sort of tailoring your expectations to the level of your alchemy. So if you're not a professional and artisan, then you're not going to get these average proc rates. So definitely make sure that you tailor this in until you get up to around artisan. I really wouldn't put too much stock in profit and loss. I'd just use all the materials you have to craft. But anyway, if we were to look at this and let's say at the moment, we're going to craft everything ourselves. So there's going to be no cost at all. You can tick the tax button, but it's not necessarily needed because you're crafting everything yourself. What we're going to work out then is that Tyrant's Blood value. So Tyrant's Blood is going to sell for around 50,000. This is a vague estimation. You'd have to check the marketplace yourself and put this value in. And again, it's going to be at 2.5 Tyrant's Blood that it's working this out on. What you're going to do is hit, hit the submit changes. That's going to now do the calculation for you. So if you were to craft a thousand Tyrant's Blood after gathering all the materials yourself, minus the 8,000 for the sugar and not factoring in the cost of any of the byproducts except for the shimmering powder value. These are a hand in that you hand in directly for silver. It'll show you here that the single value is 105,000. So that's for 2.5 and you're going to make 105 million out of that batch. So keep in mind, this isn't per one, this is per 2.5 and it is based off the average alchemy rate. If you were to then start looking at buying things, so for example, you wanted to buy Monk's Branch and you were going to pay 7,000 for Monk's Branch. That's per Monk's Branch. You were going to buy the Bloods off the marketplace and the Bloods would sell for 5,000 each. So you're going to need 2,000 of the Bloods. And then the Silver Azalea, if you were going to buy these and they were selling for around 500 silver each. What we'll see now is when you submit the changes, it's going to detract the cost minus any taxes or inclusive of any taxes it's then going to update your total profit values. So you can see just from that little example how good this site is. It works out all of your profit and loss for you. You just have to put the values in. Now the great thing about this as well, if you can't be bothered gathering stuff and you think there might be an opening on the market where you can make some money, you can just go ahead and put the full values in if you were to buy everything for the marketplace. So if you were to buy everything from the marketplace and you weren't bothered about how much you were spending, you could literally see how much profit you could make. Again, 68,000. Now these figures are completely made up. Don't take this as gospel at all because none of this is relevant. And I can tell you firsthand, if you were to try and buy everything off here, you wouldn't be able to make a thousand in a batch. The reason being is that trace of savagery is not readily available. 
Although some of the other things are, like Monk's Branch and Monster Bloods, Trace of Savagery is your gateway. And this comes back to why you want to tie things in with your Node Empire to cover up your weak links. If you did want to craft this, you would have to make sure that you were gathering your Trace of Savagery yourself from your nodes. This website can be used for pretty much everything. So you've got your alchemy, you've got your cooking, processing, and your production. So just from a processing level, if you wanted to do arcade planks, for exact example, you know it's going to cost the five timber. You'd put the cost in for how much it's going to cost for the timber, 1,500, for example, and say that the planks on average were selling for 3,200. These figures are pulled roughly from where people have been inputting them on the website so don't don't take them as standard at all make sure you use the ones from the website and it will show you what your processing profit is so per one your processing profit is 423 and again let's say for example you spent the time to do 10,000 then your profit will be 4 million and this again is based off a processing proc average rate of 2.5 and an average proc rate of 0.05 percent so it's relatively realistic. Again, though, this will depend on your level of your processing skill. You've then also got your production. So things like your armor, if you're crafting armors, and then it's also got your materials. It's also got a nodes tab as well. So it will tell you exactly what nodes you need to get. It will give you a calculation of what CP you need and also roughly what the CP cost per, or what the CP per hour silver is. This isn't a tool that I particularly use in terms of calculating this because the nodes just aren't as easy to set up on this website as it is to do in game. However, for those people that do like figures and like spreadsheets, this is going to be something that comes in really handy. So those are just two sites that I wanted to cover off for you. As Xbox players, then there's pretty much a chance that you're not aware of these. However, PC players have been using these for a long time, especially life skill guilds and life skillers in general. Hopefully this video has helped you out a little bit, pointed you in the right direction for where you can start making that passive and AFK income. Don't forget though, when you're active in game, your income from grinding is going to dwarf this considerably. You're not going to hit that 20 million per hour on Xbox if you're trying to do it through AFK means. Although you might make a bulk burst of profit at some point, you also have to factor in the time it takes to sell things. So like I said, I'm not going to be continuing the note guides, guys. I am sorry about that for those of you that have been following it. However, you did also get a reasonably solid, strong first setup. From there, you've probably built up the understanding of how to connect nodes, which nodes to focus on, dealing with your workers, and you're already armed with the tools you need to go out there and set up your own empire. So with the addition of this website and the node website, you should be more than able to go out there and find the different avenues to make a profit. As always guys, please hit that subscribe button if you like the content, leave any comments in the comment section and there'll be more videos coming soon.